Hello and welcome back to Seamless Steve. Today we're going to keep going on with our Pythagoras exploration. I'm going to do a bit more of a problem solving sort of style lesson. So there's going to be two of these in a row. Um, the more you sort of lean into the problem solving aspect of Pythagoras, uh, the easier that you'll find the upcoming exam. So let's jump on in. So hopefully everyone's been brainwashed by now. H squared equals A squared plus B squared. And we just follow that pattern every single time that we use um, a right angle triangle pretty much. So Pythagoras' theorem, we understand by now that if we're trying to find the biggest side in a right angle triangle, it's always the hypotenuse. And if we square the other two sides, that will always equal to the biggest side squared. Similarly, if we're trying to find one of these smaller sides, so the B or the A over here, if we want to find the A, that would be A squared would equal to the hypotenuse squared minus the B squared. So that's another thing that we need to consider. So when you're doing a bit of problem solving, there's there's six really interesting ways that you can sort of approach it. So the first one is to create a diagram or a picture. The next one is using guess and check and seeing whether or not it works. Number three is making a table or a list and then just comparing patterns that you can see. And then number four is one of my interest, more favorite, favorite ones is using logical reasoning. So trying to act it out or trying to work out what's actually happening inside the scenario. Number five, finding a pattern and then trying to work from that. And the last one is working backwards. So when you're doing these problem solving style questions, these are little tools that you can use with all your math knowledge to sort of work backwards. Now with most Pythagoras explorations, we're pretty much gonna do one and four. So creating a picture and then trying to use logical reasoning behind the scenes. So the first example I'm gonna go through, and if you wanna pause the video here and see if you can do it by yourselves before I go through it, that might be worthwhile. So the question here is, if a ladder is placed at the top of a four-story apartment block and the base is 6.3 meters away from the wall, how long is the ladder? And then we also note one story of a building is, pro is three meters with this calculation. So here's the four-story building. We've got the ladder that's 6.3 meters away on the base. Now, you don't have to go as intricate as my drawing here, but drawing a quick little triangle, trying to work out what's the unknown, what are you trying to find? Um, really helps here. So the first step is we want to find the actual height of the building in the same measurement as that 6.3 meters. And we do that by times in the four stories by three meters. And that gives us the 12 meter measuring measurement. Next, we would then go h squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. We substitute the values in. So the unknown side x squared is equal to 6.3 squared plus 12 squared, because this is the ladder obviously on the hypotenuse there. And then we go x squared is equal to 39.69 plus 144. And we get down to 183.69. Now, obviously, this is another way to think about this logically. The latter is not going to be 183.69 meters. So we've got to do the last little step here, which is then to square root uh, that number. And then we get the latter is going to be 13.55. Now, as a little bit of problem solving checking, that sort of is reasonable because we've done the Pythagorean triads before. We should start seeing sort of a little bit of pattern. So 3.55, first of all, is that bigger than the other two sides? Yes. And is it reasonable? Absolutely. 13 is reasonable if you've got a 12 and a six sort of triangle. So the ladder is now 13.55 meters. Now, if you're an exam with problem solving style questions like this, my biggest hint as a teacher is making sure that you highlight that final answer. So then that makes it a lot easier for us to sort of see where you're going with it. The next example, um, if you've got two skyscrapers that are located 25 meters apart and then a cable link that top links the top, um, find the length of the cable if the buildings are 50 and 80 meters in height give your answer the correct two decimal place. So just pause the video there, have a go and see what happens. Cool. So first of all, what you should notice is if this is 80 meters high and then this other building is 50 meters high, you can work out the difference between those. And notice that I use the keyword difference uh, by simply subtracting the 80 from the 50. So you'll find that this is 30 meters high and then this is 25. And then we've got a good old right angle triangle. So pretty much what happens here is what the, the, what we just described. So explanation here is we've got 30 meters for this distance here, and we've got an X measurement here, and then 25 across. So we've got a, a 30, 25 triangle. We substitute the values in. So we've got X squared is equal to 25 squared plus 30 squared, which equals 1,525. And then to find the actual value, we square root that, which gives us 39.05. Cool. So the next example is quite an interesting one. Um, basically, we'll need to find the distance from A to B. Now, this is a three-dimensional question. So there's a cube here that's one, got side lengths of one meter. So they're all the same distances around these corners, uh, from corner to corner on the edges. 
And what we want to find is from A to B, which is the red dotted line. Now, if you think about that, this line is not just going across the face of the front, it's actually going a little bit back. So it's going to be here and here, going at two diagonals. So it's going to be going down, but then it's also going to go forward. So to work that out, I've got the little, two little triangles there that we actually need to calculate. If you look down from the top, down at the, the cube, you would see this blue line across here. And this is what this triangle here represents. So if you had a one and a one, to find that blue dotted line or across the base, you would use um, simple Pythagoras with a triangle of one and one. So I'm gonna put a few little labels in on these triangles. And by using these labels, it just makes it a little bit easier to work out where the vertices are. So A is at this corner here, and then C is at the front corner as well, and then D is that back corner, and then B is the top back corner. So if we're looking at ACD, that's basically looking at the base of the cube. So to find the blue dashed line, it's pretty easy. Um, and then once we have that, we can then find the red dashed line using simple Pythag that we've done before. So to do this, we go h squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. We substitute in what we know. So ad, so the distance from a to d, is equal to ac squared plus uh, dc squared, which gives us one squared plus one squared, which equals one plus one, which equals two. So then we can just do the square root of two and then leave it as that. Now I'm leaving it as that because we're actually gonna reuse the root two in the next calculation. So rather than solving that and getting 1.4, blah, 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 we can keep in the square root of two, which makes it heaps easier. So to go here, we then go h squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, which is the same as ab squared is equal to ad squared plus bd squared, which equals the square root of two squared. Now, if we do the square root of two and then square it, that's kind of like six plus one take away one. We're just left with the original number, so if, which would be six. So in this case here, square root of six, um, two and then squaring it is just equal to two. And then one squared is equal to one. And then we get that is equal to three. Now we can go AD, I'm oh, sorry, that should be AB is equal to the square root of three. Type that in your calculator and it approximately equals 1.73. So if you want to find the distance from the very corner at the front to the top corner at the back, it is equal to 1.73 meters in this case. So just pause the video, see if you can do these three questions. Cool, so the first one, Stanley has drawn a right angle triangle. One side is 14 centimeters and the other is 18 centimeters. What are the two possible lengths for the third side? Well, firstly, it depends which one you wanna use the hypotenuse. So if you said they're both the shorter side, you could say 14 and 18, and then you'd get 22.80. The other option then is 18 is the hypotenuse and then 14, and then the other side would be 11.31. Number 10, um, ABC and BCD are right angle triangles. Find the length of AB. So we come across here to this little diagram. So we've got ABC and then BCD. Um, so this hypotenuse here for this triangle is actually a short side on this triangle. So what we can do is find this length of CB first, and then that will help us to find AB. So to do that, you would do uh, 19 squared minus 13 squared and then square root it to give that distance. And I'd leave it in this exact value. After that, you then have the hypotenuse again and the small side so to find that. So you would find that value squared um, minus the five squared or 25 and then square root it. And then that would give you the X and then square root it and you get 12.93. The last one, number 11, uh, flag, Wooden flagpole is 25 foot tall. In a storm, the flagpole is broken and its top touches the ground five foot from the base. Find the lengths of the segments of the flagpole. So the whole flag is 25 foot and it's been broken um, in the storm. So the top touches the ground five, meter, five feet from the base. So it's five feet across here and you're left with this measurement here and here. So this was 25 together. So you would add these two together is equal to 25. So um, this distance here, A plus B is equal to 25. And you could use that um, information to work out the 12 and then the 13 foot, or hopefully you've seen that that's sort of a Pythagorean triplet with the 5, 12 and 13. Cool, um, there is a worksheet for you guys to have a crack at. The challenge question is question number six.
So that's it for me. Hopefully you've seen some problem solving here with Pythagoras. The more you practice this, the better you get. There's only a certain amount of Pythagorean questions that a teacher can ask. Um, my hint here is to try and do as many of these as you can, because if you can do the problem solving, the, the, the normal style questions are a lot easier. That's it for me. Thanks again for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please give us a like and subscribe and see you next time on Steam It With Steve. Adios.